everyone and welcome. I am Jasjeet and in today's video we are going to do a financial health check to set you up to buy your first home in Australia. Before we start, here is an exercise for you. There are five questions you have to ask yourself and if the answers for all of them is a big fat yes, it indicates that you are ready to buy your first home. Here are the questions. Are you earning enough to cover the deposit and handle the costs associated with buying your first home? Do you need an asset that will most likely increase in value with time and will generate equity? Do you need stability and security in your life? Do you need freedom to make changes to the place you live without worrying about the landlord? Are you sick of paying someone else's mortgage? There is a 90% chance that you were unsure whether to say yes or no to these questions. But that doesn't mean that you are not ready to buy. Instead, it means you need more clarity or information to help you answer these questions. So today in this video, I'm going to walk you through the three steps on how you can get ready to buy your first home in Australia. And towards the end of the video, I will give you a bonus tip on how you can make this process super easy for you. Let's get started. Step 1. Understand the costs associated with buying your first home. There are two types of costs, upfront costs and ongoing costs. You will need your savings to pay for your upfront costs and an ongoing income to pay for your ongoing costs for 25 to 30 years, which is generally the term of your home loan. So seriously, buying a home is a long-term financial commitment and therefore financial health check is important before making this big decision. Now let's look into the breakdown of these costs. For the upfront costs, the major expense is the deposit for your home. An ideal start is a deposit of 20% of the property's purchase price. If you're looking to buy a house with a price tag of $500,000, then you should ideally have $100,000 as deposit. Tap into financial help schemes available from the Australian government to put money towards deposit for your first home. These are number one, first home owner grant, which is only applicable if you are buying a brand new home, not exceeding a certain fixed value. The amount of these grants will vary depending on the state where the property is located. For Victoria, this can be found on State Revenue Office website, which tells about the eligibility criteria, completion and lodgement of application. I have provided the link in the description below. Second is First Home Super Saver Scheme, where you can put extra money into your super before tax and after tax to save for your first home. You can then apply to release these voluntary contributions to help with the purchase. The information can be found on the ATO website. The second way out is seeking alternative path where you will have to pay a one-off extra payment called Loan Mortgage Insurance, also called LMI, if you have less than 20% deposit or your loan to value ratio is more than 80%. For example, if your loan amount is $450,000 and the property value is $500,000, then LVR is 90%. In this scenario, you have to pay LMI. The higher the LVR, the higher will be the LMI. There are minor expenses that must also be paid upfront. These are number one is stamp duty. Stamp duty is the tax you pay to get the land transferred to your name. The amount you will pay depends on the value of the property. Stamp duty calculator for the state of Victoria is available and I have provided the link in the description below. The good news is that you can tap into the benefit scheme available from Australian government for concession or exemption of stamp duty for first home no matter new or old. Second is conveyancer cost. A conveyancer will help with transfer of the ownership of the land from seller to buyer and can cost about $600 to $1400. Third is loan application fee. It is one of fee paid to the lender for setting up a home loan. The cost can vary with the type of lender and can range from $200 to $700. Fourth is some extra costs such as bills or rates that the previous owner of the property had paid in advance. 
there are minor expenses that are based on individual preferences. These are number one, cost of building and pest inspection. The building inspectors will provide a report if any repairs or maintenance is required or if there is any pest infestation and what will be the estimated cost to fix it. They can charge approximately $400 to $1,000. 2. Cost of builder or architect. If you plan to renovate, you should check with a registered architect or builder who can report on what renovations are possible and of course they charge for their services. 3. Is buyer's agent cost. They are licensed real estate agent who act for the buyer. These agents can do all the work for you starting from shortlisting properties to attending inspections to negotiating or bidding on properties. They can also access off-market properties but for all of these services they will charge either a flat fee or a commission of 1-3% to of property's purchase price. Fourth is Loan Mortgage Insurance LMI. The LMI is a one-off payment that buyer has to pay if the deposit amount is less than 20%. Now let's talk about the ongoing costs. Number one is loan repayments which you will have to make for the next 25 to 30 years of your lifetime. Two is home loan ongoing fee. It is charged monthly or yearly for administering your home loan. This can range from 100 to $1,000 per year based on the loan provider and individual preferences. Number three is household bills like electricity bill, water, gas, council rates all add up to the ongoing costs. Number four is home and content insurance. Number five is income protection insurance. If you are worried about losing your job or business, then this insurance can cover you up to a certain period of time. Number six is the new furniture cost. Well, I just couldn't leave this one out. I know how much we love to buy new furniture for our new homes. Step two is perform a self-check on your financial health. Now that you have clarity on the costs involved in buying your first home, check if you can afford it. You can do this by using a budget planner. The link is in the description below. The budget planner will help you identify where your money is going and how much you are left with after all the expenses. It will show you a clear picture of how much money you have or don't have for affording a new home after expenses, spending and saving. Now that you know how much repayments you can afford to make, you can use a mortgage calculator to get an approximate idea on how much you can borrow based on your affordable repayments. It will also tell you how much total interest you will pay on the amount borrowed. I have provided the link to the calculator in the description. So now from step 1, you know about all the costs associated with the home buying process. And from step 2, you know how much you can afford to repay back and how much you can borrow. Now let's take the game to the next level and confirm with the lender how much you can actually borrow. Step 3 is to get a pre-approval for your home loan. You can apply for a pre-approval either online or in person to the lender which is your bank. Pre-approval is in the form of an official letter from the lender saying how much you can borrow and it also has an expiry date. The documents required for the pre-approval are proof of identity, pay slips, tax return statement, account statement, any deposit or savings that you may have. There are two advantages for getting a pre-approval. One, it makes your offer look more attractive to the seller in a private sale. When you give a written offer by signing the contract of sale and it doesn't have the clause saying subject to finance, it gives you a better chance of getting your offer accepted. Number two, it is a must requirement for a public sale or an auction. At an auction, the contract of sale is predetermined by the seller and is often unconditional. Now is the time for the bonus tip. How to make home buying process? Super easy for you. Consult with a good mortgage broker. Mortgage brokers don't charge money from you for consultation. Instead, they get paid commission from the bank you choose to go with for your home loan. They will help figure out how much you can borrow based on your income, assets, expenses and liabilities. They will provide you with different options available for home loan. 
and will help compare and choose the best for your needs. They can negotiate the loan rates with the lender, file your loan application and also coordinate final settlement. If you need help finding a good mortgage broker, then send me an email. I make these videos to help you achieve your goals and you can also help someone today by sharing this video. Subscribe as it only takes 2 minutes and when you subscribe, I get inspired to help more of you. Happy house hunting and I will see you in the next video where I will be talking about the key steps to own the keys to your first home. Till then, take care.